Oh, hey there, YouTube. As you guys saw from the last video, the bottom end of the engine is finally in the Dakar Rally car. Three plus years later. Oh, this is very exciting. Oh, today, I think we're going to go ahead and keep knocking out some more front end suspension parts. Put the sway bar back in, do the tie rod ends, a bunch of other little things like that. Um, we got to see what all we can get done. So, one thing before we get rolling too far ahead. I apologize if this video is a little bit smoky. And if my voice sounds a little bit weird, uh, there's been a lot of smoke coming over from the Canadian wildfires. And it's really messing with my airway really bad. I was in a car accident when I was 16 years old and my airway was very badly damaged. So it's probably why you hear me breathe heavy and stuff like that. And this smoke is just tearing me up. So this video is a little bit smoky. That's why it looks like a wildfire out here even though we're not on fire at all. Anyway, let's get rolling and get some stuff knocked out. That didn't go well. <sighs> these are polyurethane front sway bar bushings. Uh, these are available on eBay. They're only like $45 or $50 last I looked. And these are new bushings. So we're gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff in here. Get this all bolted up. I gotta remember where I put the bolts. That's gonna be fun. Let's go get this all thrown together. Man, these are looking pretty. Some fancy insulation grease. I don't know which one goes where. So there's two different sizes, a tall one and a short one. I'm going to guess the taller one goes towards the front and the shorter one goes towards the back where the threads are. That would be my assumption. So that's what we're going to do. And if I'm wrong, I'll let you guys know soon. <sighs> Separate that. Slide that over top of there. There we go. Room out of these. Get that to slide on all the way. There we go. That's one side started. Okay, so the shorter side does go in the front. News to me, I didn't know. I'm a newbie. We're all learning together, right? Oh, throw that first pushing in right there. Put that in place. Put a little lock nut. And then the bolt. I should say the nut. I think I'll do that the other side and we'll go hammer these down. All right, I'm actually just going to leave that just a little bit snug, not super tight. I want to wait until I get everything, all the suspension under its own weight and everything like that, just so I'm not binding anything or doing anything weird like that. So I guess next up, let's go ahead and throw the knuckles or the knuckles in with the new wheel bearings and get that all bolted up.
Yeah, all right, here we are. These are all put together and pretty much ready to rock and roll. I gotta go throw my MR2 brake spacers on here, bolt these all into the car, and realistically, put the struts in, tie rod ends in, CV shafts, we're almost done with the front end. We got a lot to go. All right, let's go toss these turds in. Well, I went to go throw these in the car and then I realized, I if it's the ball joints on, got me some Bevo Tech ball joints. Hopefully these will be halfway decent quality. I do know that SKP or whatever brands just don't fit on these cars. You gotta grind them to make them fit. So try to follow the little heart recommendations on Rock Auto if you buy from there and you'll be all right. These are greasable, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the grease fitting in here right now. They are pre-greased. I might douse a little bit on to get in the car, but I think it'll be okay. There we go. That seems pretty snug. Sweet. Let's go throw these in the car. Now, first thing first, I'm gonna crawl underneath the car, throw a CV shaft in. It's about that time anyway. And when I bolt the spindle all up, that can all just be done. All right. I would highly encourage you guys to use track motive, brand new axles, not remands. And then this little clip right here, I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, have that C-clip facing downward when you go to put it in. Make sure your trans is in neutral, all that sort of fun stuff. Well, I guess the way we go. the CV shaft down here. Drop that in the ball joint. There, we're all in there. Now we gotta push this down and get it to line up with the strut. Since I have lift springs in here, it's gonna be a little bit harder than normal. So I'm gonna need to get some pry bar action out. For those of you guys who watched my lift kit video, you probably are going to be familiar with this method. But it works good for me. We got her all lined up finally. I uh, got off some anti-seize and now everything is coated in anti-seize forever, so that's great. <sighs> and voila, we are all set. I'm gonna go ahead and use some internet magic and finish up the other side. All right, we got this side all done now too. Oh, right, before we go ahead and do any tie rod ends, I'm actually gonna crawl underneath it and throw some transmission fluid in it so I don't forget later. 
because I got a lot of things I got to remember to check, and that's going to be one of them. And I'm just going to do it right now and get it over with. I do have a transmission reseal video out, and I also have a how to drain and refill video out. So if you guys haven't watched those, I'd strongly encourage you to check those out. Um, I would always recommend anybody before they go drain their transmission fluid is actually pull the fill plug first to make sure you can actually get that open. Because if you go to drain your transmission fluid and you can't get your fill plug open, well, you're in for a whole world of hurt. I was going to get this ground strap hooked up somewhere. We'll do that a little later. The capacity for this is 4.1 quarts, which is something else in liters that I don't know. And whatever other unit of fluid measurements there is. I only know quarts because I am an American. All right. We're going to take this plug right here. This is for like the rear tail housing, four wheel drive section. We're going to pop this free and turn this around about seven to eight turns. So we're loose right there. So I'm just going to try and mark it with a. Actually, I'm going to mark it. And then after that, I'll know where I'm at. And then I can do it seven turns. Okay, so I'm using Valvoline GL48090, and I'm going to go ahead and pump her up. This is going to take forever, so uh, I will probably cut a lot of this out, otherwise you guys are going to be here for four hours. And my arm is going to fall off. Oh no, oh no, get in your home, you bastard. One hour later. All right, all the plugs are tightened up. I ended up using a mostly empty gear oil bottle for that last like little tenth of a quart, plus a little extra because I probably spilled a lot, but we're done. Oh, the trans is filled. Time to find out if my seal replacements leak or not. Fingers crossed they won't. I'm gonna go take care of that ground strap. And, whew, I think I'm gonna wrap it up with this video after that. I know that's not outrageously exciting, but it's very time consuming on my end. Uh, super happy to be this far. Oh, it's hot out too. <clears throat> this air is thick and smoky and it sucks. But hopefully it'll be gone soon. Uh, hope everyone in Canada is doing all right. My Scotia Blue 245s and my heart go out for you. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I wanna pick back up, I'm gonna knock out some tie rods, some brake boosters, brake calipers, pads, rotors, the whole nine yards. Get that shit all done, get the fluid all bled. And then it'll be on to the rest of the engine work. That's really all I got left to do. So stay tuned for that. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios.